okay if I do my talk after that? Thank you. Huh? Thank you. So good. I want to talk to you later, though, in front of everybody, okay? But I don't want to... <laughs> th that, that, that was amazing. Yeah. I was going to start with something kind of quirky, but... I don't want to now. That was so, I, I, we're all in this mood now. I'll do the quirky stuff at the end. Okay. Oh, so welcome, everybody. I just love him. Love him, love him, love him. He really opened your heart. You know, and, and that's what we want to be about here. That is what we're about here. And as I said, I'm doing the second week um, of the slides, I think. Ah, uh, there. Um, week two. So in our Science of Mind textbook, it, this, the second lesson is the way it works. And I love that spirit works for us by working through us. And when I think about that, I, I think about, you know, I was raised Catholic, as I've shared. This is my time to let go of that. No, <laughs> no, 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 I appreciate my Catholicism because it did teach me about God and I did feel I had a connection, but I was a little afraid of this thing. You know, I have to go to confession and tell. I, I remember when I first started going to confession, I had to think of things. Oh, yeah, I fought with my brother three times. I did lie to my mom, you know, and, and just little silly things that, but I thought, well, I better get them off. But I picked this slide because the way it works, you know, look at that. Though our thoughts, our energy goes out into the universe, and that's how it's working. It's working. We don't, we don't think of God as a man that's sitting up in a big chair watching everything we do. That man would be so friggin' busy. It's not that. It's an energy. This energy is pure love, and it never says no. It never says no. And if your life isn't working, what, what are you sending out in the, in the universe? And then if you think, oh, I need answers, look at all those answers, those light bulbs come up in your head. Do you ever think about, you know, we'll sit in meetings, and we'll think, okay, what do we need to do? And we we'll say, okay, let's just be quiet for a minute. And then it, the idea pops in our heads, right, when we're having our meetings about what needs to be done. And take that time. But that's what we are. I think of ourselves, think of yourself as an avatar, okay, an avatar. And just think about how boring it would be on the other side, just sitting there in peace all the time, you know. You got to have a little excitement. And the idea of, Yes, I want to come into a body form. Yeah, there may be some challenges, but woohoo, I get to figure them out. And with, but I don't figure them out by myself. It's spirit. We're, like Dr. Tom used to say and Dr. Joe, let's give God a good time, you know? And think of your body. I mean, I think the only thing I think of that makes me sad if, when I make my transition is not being able to physically hug my babies, hug my children heart to heart with them. That's what's so special. But so think about that. Spirit works by us by working through us. I, th I love some of the things that are on Facebook. I think, ah, this is brilliant. Life is like a book. Some chapters are sad, some are happy, and some are exciting. But if you never turn the page, you will never know what the next chapter is in store for you. And that's, isn't that great? You've got it, you know, if you get bored with your life or things are going back, bad, change the chapter. You get to write the story of your life, not somebody else. Not somebody else. Have we been through bad times, some of us? Yeah, I'm sure we have. But that's part of growing. Something good comes out of everything. Ryan? Okay. In order to love who you are, you cannot hate the experiences that shaped you. All right? So think about that. Think of some of the most horrific things. Some of us have been through 
worse things than others, but there, but, but there, it's an opportunity for you to grow. Something good is coming out of it. You may think it's the worst thing in the world. The next slide. I love this. If you went back and fixed all the mistakes you've ever made, you would erase yourself. <laughs> I'm just saying. But really, really, think of all the, the things in your life. I'm going to read this now because I think, I, you know, if I look around this room, I think a lot of you will be able to relate to this. We grew up in the 50s, 60s, 70s. We studied in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. We were dating in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. We got married and discovered the, the world in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. I got married in 1970. I so relate to all this. I'm sorry if you don't relate to this, but I think it's great. Um, so too bad. Um, we stabilize, uh, we venture in the 80s and 90s. We stabilize in the 2000s. So we venture in the 80s and 90s. Towards the end of the, well, the beginning of the 90s, that's when I started searching. I ventured into this teaching. We stabilize in the 2000s. We get wiser in the 2010s, <laughs> and we are going firmly through and beyond 2020. 2020. It turns out we've lived through eight different decades. Think about that. Two different centuries, two different millennia. We have gone from the telephone with an operator for long-distance calls. Do you remember that? I used to love to listen on the party lines and listen to people talk. <laughs> to video calls to anywhere in the world. We have gone from slides to YouTube, from vinyl records to online music, from handwritten letters to email and WhatsApp, from radio to black and white TV. Do you remember when we used to sit in front of the TV and the number would go eight, seven, and we'd wait for the show to come on? Some of you that are young, you don't understand, but it was a different time. Um, let's see, we went from radio to black and white TV to color TV and then to 3D HD TV. We went to the video store and now we watch Netflix. Ryan, you remember how you guys always used to go to the video store? <laughs> yeah. We got to know the first computers, punch cards, floppy disks, and now we have gigabytes and megabytes on our, megabytes on our smartphones. We wore shorts throughout our childhood and then long trousers, Oxfords, flares, shell suits, and blue jeans. We dodged Infantile paralysis, meningitis, polio, swine flu, and now COVID-19. And you're still here now. Okay, we rode skates, tricycles, bicycles, mopeds, petrol and diesel cars. And now we drive hybrids or electric. Yes, we've been through a lot. But what a great life we've had. They could describe us as exennials, people who were born in that world of the 50s, who had an analog childhood and a digital adulthood. <laughs> We've kind of seen it all. Our generation has literally lived through and witnessed more than any other in every dimension of life. It is our generation that has literally adapted to Change in all capitals. A big round of applause to all the members of a very special generation, which will be considered unique. So we've been through it all. We've been through it all, and we're here. And why are we here? Why are we here? So, next slide, Ryan. So, what I want to ask you is how it's 
How's it working for you? Okay, and I picked this picture because I want you to see how we are all connected. We are all connected. You can have different opinions, different points of view, but we're all connected. And the way I turn my wheel, it's going to affect somebody else. If I'm being not very nice, it's going to affect somebody else. If I'm sending love, it's going to affect someone else. And I think it was Greg Braden I saw a couple weeks ago. He was talking about, you know how we think this is all solid and stuff. He said, if we took out all the space between every atom, every human being, and took out all the space that there is, we would be the size of a sugar cube. That is, that is how connected we are. We are only connected by space, which is the energy we send out. My next slide, Brian. The great spiritual geniuses, whether it was Moses, Buddha, Plato, Socrates, Jesus, or Emerson, have taught man to look within himself to find God. And that's the way it works. That's how it's working. It's working through us. That's what Ernest Holmes teaches in all the faiths. You know, God isn't this being outside. It is here. It's generating from that heart, from your mind, and that's how it works. What are you thinking about? What, you know, Dr. Dale did such a fabulous job last week. I was like, oh, my God, you know, talking about the thing itself. You know, and the thing, you know, I like God, think of God as good on demand. That's my God, good on demand. When I think good thoughts, I know. I don't care what you tell me. I get to believe what I want to believe about any situation in any person. And that's where you find it. That's why you get quiet so you can connect with that. That's why you get quiet. So you, remember those light bulbs coming in to the brain? It can come into you. Next slide, Ryan. I guess I don't need this. Are, are we willing to consider the possibility that there may be something we do not fully under... Oh, this is from Neil Donald Walsh, who I love. Are we willing to consider po the possibility that there may be something we do not fully understand about God, about life, and about who we are, the understanding of which would change everything? I dare say a lot of you, since you grew up in that era, you probably went... You know, I, I don't know how many of you might have started in a religious science church, um, but I sure didn't. And a lot of us were brought up, I think it was very important in that time, that era, to go to church, whether it was Christian, Jewish, or whatever. We were very devoted to that. And, but I know for myself, and I, and I bet a lot that if you've never been to a Science of Mind Center, a CSL, Something drew you here. Maybe a friend knew you were going through a difficult time, or there was just something you knew. That's, I know that's what happened to me when I turned 40. There was something in me that I knew that there was, it was missing. My life wasn't bad, but there was something that was missing, and I knew, I just knew it. And the, the way I found this is I found the book, Neil Donald Walsh's, you know, his, 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 all his books, and, um, and that's, literally, I got the second book, and I got to finish the first chapter, and I was on my knees sobbing, because I knew that that was the God that I believed, and that I was connected with, and so, you know, I love the idea that we all picked our family that we came to. There's a divine reason. If you had a, a terrible childhood, I'm sorry, but you learned something, and you're here now. You are here now. You may even be going through something now, but you're here now to remind yourself of how it works, and it works through you by means of you. Next slide, Brian. This original life is infinite. It is good. It is filled with peace. It is the essence of purity. It is the ultimate intelligence. It is power. It is law. It is life. It is in us. And so the way it works is how are you using it? How, do you believe that? Do you feel that magnificence in you? Can you see the divine in each person you look at? 
because that's all you're looking at is the divine. That is that divine God, and you get to use it. It doesn't judge you. It's not going to say, oh, boy, you screwed that up. You know, it's not going to say that. It's going to say, how'd that go for you? What did you learn? Who are you because of that? You know, something drew you here. I always love when we do, which is coming up, the end of the month, our new membership class, you know, where everybody gets together. And I love to find out, how did you find us? What made you come here? Because I know it, oh, I just got God bumps. I know that it's because of the divine. There was something in you. You were sending out that message. I need a new message. I need to be, I need to know who I am. And so you are these divine beings. My, um, oh, the thing then works for us by working through us always. It cannot work for us in any other way, okay? It can't work. If, if something terrible happens in your life, as painful as it is, what, what is it that, that I need to love this? Neil Donald Walsh says, when something negative is happening in your life, love it to death. Put so much love on it that it's gone. It goes. may not be gone in this moment, but it is gone. It is gone. All right? And I love that. So recognize that power. You are not some little leaf floating on a, a lake, unless you want to be. That's nothing wrong. That's God, too. But, you know, recognize who you are. Recog and not in an arrogant way, but in a grateful way. Gratitude is such an important thing. You know, I, I, I don't know how you can live here and not in this valley and not feel gratitude, except for the traffic um, now. But gratitude, when we look at the mountains that just are hugging us, that is God just hugging us and enveloping us with the beauty of where we live. We are so blessed. My next slide, Ryan. Okay. The life I live is created by the story I tell. Okay, so I'm going to get in a little negative here. All right. <laughs> Do you ever have those people that you even see them come and you go, oh, God, because you know it's going to be, you know, it's going to be like Eeyore, looks like rain. <laughs> I, as you know, I was a court reporter, and um, I was the court We've got, we've got, I'm going to introduce you later. We, we, you know, we had, uh, you know, it brought court reporting. Brought I, when I first found out about this teaching and stuff, and I thought, oh my God, I'm a court reporter. I am making money off of people's misery. The, how spiritual is this, you know? And um, but then, I the thought came in and said, No, Laura, you're the light wherever you go. Be that light. And, and, and that's kind of my thing. In fact, my kids have a, they, they had William make a carving for, of a lighthouse, you know, that shines out their light. We're all lighthouses. So anyway, I was a court reporter, and we owned, I owned the agency, and we had this one client that, oh, every time you had a deposition, it was a war, you know, and you'd sit there, and, and my court reporters wouldn't report for him anymore so I had to go in there and do it so at the end and it was it was terrible I can't remember his name thank God and <laughs> and at the end of the deposition he's packing up and he goes oh Laura he said you know every time I take a deposition these attorneys here in the desert are such jerks and blah 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 he used other words but because Dr. Ken's here I can't say him and <laughs> and um and, and, you know, and I'm packing up, and as I'm leaving, I turned to him, I said, you know, you might want to think, what is the common denominator in every deposition you take? <laughs> and I wheeled my machine out of there. But it's true. It was true. He, you know, he caused, he brought that out of them. And, but that's true. What is the common denominator? So what are you thinking? What are you projecting in the world? Because that's the way it works. That's the way it works. If you think the world is going to hell in a handbasket, send it love. Love it to death. Just send it love, knowing, knowing it is all working out. My next one, Ryan. 
the moment you imagine any possible negative outcome that may occur in any possible circumstance in your life, love it to death. I could almost say I mean that literally. Kill off the negative energy with love. Cut it off at the pass. Snip it in the bud. You know, as I showed you, we didn't, we didn't know everything, that, every little thing that was going on in the world five minutes after it happened or when it was happening. You know, we would just hear it on the 6 o'clock news and the 11 o'clock news, and that was it. There was nothing else. I remember the big deal when Ryan, when my kids got their little beepers or whatever they were, where I could say, call home, you know, and he, they'd know to call me. And, and then I remember, do you remember when the first cell phone came out? Do you remember that? I remember my brother-in-law, he wasn't married to my sister yet, and he came, he had one, and it was like a bat, I mean, it was this huge box that he'd carry with him. Do you remember that? You know, and we've got now our Dick Tracy phones. The only thing I'm sad about is we didn't get our Jetsons flying cars, but that's probably a good thing, the way people drive on the streets. Can you imagine them up in the air? So if somebody's coming to you with negativity, just listen. You don't have to get into a dialogue. Just go, oh. And you think they say, well, I, you know, let me think about it, you know, and just, and, and just love them. Just love them. My next slide, Ryan. So I, this is the thing. Think of yourself as a human magnet. I love this, Abraham Hicks. Attract what you, attracting what you speak, think, and feel, because that is the truth. You attract what you think, speak about. What are you talking about all the time? What do you feel? Are the people happier after they meet with you, or are they miserable? <laughs> you know, let's, let's, let's send everything out. Ryan, the next slide. So remember this. It is not the changing of the calendar year that matters. It's the changing of your mindset and beliefs that will manifest your best year. So are we going to be manifesting our best year, people? Yes. That's right. That's right. Let's send that love up, no matter what you think. Oh, I hope I didn't hurt you, Richard. I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> no, Richard's a mediator. He's an <laughs> anyway, thank God for mediators. You guys hear a lot and have to deal with a lot. But think about this. Let's just know. No, I don't care what's on your plate right now that you might think is a negative thing. Just love it to death. You know, just send that love out. Be that love. You know, that's what this center is all about. We're not here to tell you, you better be here next Sunday or you're going to go to hell. <laughs> If we did that, I'd open up a confessional over there, and I would have a great time. I might even take my machine out and say, oh, this is a good one. <laughs> I'll use that in a talk. Um, so enjoy life. Don't love everything. Love every circumstance. Know that everything in your life that has led you to this moment might have had the worst parents in the world. I remember my parents would tell me something, and I'd go, I'm never going to say that to my child when I have a child, and I didn't. Other things I might have said, Ryan, and I'm so sorry. Um, but anyway, let's just make 20, 2024. Those of us in the 50s and 60s, that was, do you remember when 2001, A Space Odyssey came out? We're like, wow, Hal, now we've got Siri or whatever her name is, you know, talking to us. But anyway, life is going to change, and it keeps changing. Let's change it for the best. Let's change it filled with love and joy, no matter what. That's what you are. That's what your heart is all about. Feel it. Your prayer was beautiful. Feel that heart, because that's where it is. You are not alone. You are these avatars of love. And that love that's coming through you as you is the divine. Call it God. Call it as uh, Daniel, love your songs, Daniel. Call it what you want, but it is the divine. Even if you're an atheist, you are divine. You came here for a divine purpose, and that is to spread your joy and love. And boy, the world really does need us right now. So let's be that love. So my, my last slide. So think about it when things are going, how's it working? 
It's working through you and as you. It is that divine energy. And we are all connected. We love you so much. You are each a part of each other. We are all connected. And so it is.